The Lord is our light and our salvation. He is the strength of our lives. He wants to fill us with the knowledge of his will and with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And all of that begins in the fear of the Lord. That means know that he is God. He is creator of all the ends of the earth. Anything that is seen and not seen, it was created by God and for him. And we are his creation. We are in the hand of the Lord. When we acknowledge him for who he is, this is the beginning of the fear of the Lord. The, the, the Spirit of God actually teaches us the fear of the Lord. He reveals Christ in our hearts. He reveals the Father to us. He reveals who the Lord is. He's the interpreter who interprets to us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in, the, in this earth, convicting the whole world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Everyone. There's something about us. We know when something's wrong. Even as little kids, we know when we're doing something wrong. We always try to hide it. It feels uncomfortable and it's just not right. I believe that's the Holy Spirit in the world. Teaching us, showing us. If it wasn't for him, how would we know? How would we know? I'm so glad for the salvation of God. I'm so glad that he's come and he's revealed himself to us so that we could come to him and re repent, change our mind about our lives and come and, and know him who is faithful, him who is true, him who wants us to live the right kind of life. Not just in this world, but in the one to come. The, the Lord, our God, the Father of heaven and earth, he has thoughts of peace and not of evil for anyone. He has a successful end and that end talks about him. It's a testimony of Jesus Christ. The Lord is our light and our salvation. The Lord is the strength of our lives. I, I like Psalm 27. We'll go there real f fast first. <laughs> fast first, okay. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? What shall I fear? This is what the writer says. It's the Psalm of David. He's the one that went up against against Goliath, isn't he? The Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall not want. That's Psalm 23. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for right living for his name's sake. For his own name's sake. And then he says, Yeah. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. And that's where I was going. He, I will not fear evil because you are with me. Come back to Psalm 27 here. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom will I be afraid? This is the situation that David faces. When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled. They stumbled and fell. Why? Because the Lord is his light. The Lord is, he's recognizing the Father for who he is. He's recognizing the faithful words of God for what they are, the words that come into our, our, our lives. Those words that the Holy Spirit reminds us of, those words, they come to our remembrance. And we agree with God and we lift up our shield, the word of God. It's our shield and surrounding shield is the word that keeps us separated from evil. John chapter 17. It's the word that the Lord has sanctified us with, set us apart with. It's in our heart and it's on our mind. This is why we're able to do all the things we do by the power of Christ Jesus in us. Because, see, we believe 
the Lord is our light and our salvation. We believe that Jesus is the light of the world. The revelation of God, the exact representation of the Father, the Creator, the one who made all things, the one in whom all things consist. I pray for us to be strong in the Lord, to know his ways, to know his mind, to have his mind. I pray for us to trust him with all of our heart and not lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge him. This is what it's really all about. Acknowledging the Father, acknowledging the Son, acknowledging the Holy Spirit, and acknowledging the voice of God. We can get up and run and not be weary. We can walk and not be faint because we trust in who he is. Though the enemy comes against us like a flood, like a storm against the wall is what it says in Isaiah. The voice of the Lord lifts up a standard. He gives us the word from the Lord regarding whatever we're walking through, and we are strengthened by it. Remember that time of having to go to the hospital for that cancer scare. And the Lord said, Joshua 1 and 9, Have I not said, fear not? And I went back to that word and I read it. Fear not, I am with you. And I kept that word. I took it with me to the doctor's office. See, the Lord's going to remind you of all truth. Are you listening? Put him first. Delight yourself in the Lord. You know, in these times of quiet, when, when we have the moment, that time in the morning, that time in the night, whatever time it is for you, that you get up and you have that personal moment with God. That's that time when you can get to him and know his will for your life. You can know his mind. He wants to give you his thoughts. He wants to give you his strength. He wants to give you his will, his way of doing things. So we come and we sit down with him and we worship him. We come and we sit down and we know him. We trust him. Huh? Because he's with us. He's not looking to give an evil thought to you. He's not looking to have you overcome evil with more evil. He wants you to overcome evil with good, and he's going to give you the strength to do it. He's going to give you the grace to do it. He's going to give you the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding. He's going to give you the strength to close a door in your life the strength to open a door in your life, the strength to walk through the door in your life, the strength to walk out of a door in your life. <clears throat> it's called loving the Lord your God with all your with all your spirit, soul, and, and might, all your strength. It's called laying yourself out before him, saying there's no one else like you, Jehovah. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Elohim. We love you and we need you. I want to walk according to your ways. No matter what there is happening in this day, you already saw this day before I, I woke up in it. You already saw the night before I laid my head down in it. You knew what was prepared for me. You knew what you know what the enemy has prepared for me. But you're my shield and surrounding shield. You put angels in charge of my life to keep me from evil. To catch me if my foot should dash against a stone, to help me to walk on the lion, the adder, and the cobra, those spiritual vipers and snakes and, and, and whatever, lions, all that junk that comes against us from the enemy. God knows where it is, all the hidden traps. And yet because we acknowledge him in all of our ways, he's, he rebukes the devourer, he he shows you the snare before that snare can grab hold of your foot. He breaks the snare of the fowler. He breaks up the noise of the pestilence. The pestilence, the, the disease that, that's being threatened to your mind. You know, it's a threat to your hearing, a threat to your eyes, a threat to your, your thoughts. And it's always plaguing you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We don't live by fear. We live by faith. 
Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear, but his spirit, the spirit of grace. Spirit of grace. And the spirit he teaches us how to cry out, Abba, Father. The will of God be done. This, the spirit of God, he teaches us how to cry out, cry out to the Lord, Father, Abba, Abba. Our heart relaxes and rests on the Almighty God, and we're not filled with anxiety or grief or sorrow. But the true, awesome fear of the Lord. The Lord is our light and our salvation. The Lord is the strength of our lives. I will not be afraid when the wicked come against me to eat up our flesh. Let's just say it like that. I'm sorry. My enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. And the next verses take us into that secret place where we love to dwell. Where we love to dwell. And where we... We desire him so much to know the beauty of his holiness. This is us sitting in that secret place again, resting in the hands of our beloved, the one who loves us and calls us his beloved. I, I'm praying for us to be strong in the Lord, to see him more than we're seeing everything else around us, to know what it's like to open our eyes and see more help. More help than the danger that is around us. The overwhelming power of, of the flesh that yells and screams and wants what it wants, that challenges us. And look at it like this. We, we're growing from faith to faith. We're getting stronger. We're growing in our soul, our, our soul is prospering. We have soul prosperity that is leaping and abounding in the goodness of the knowledge of God in our lives every single day. He wants to fill us with the knowledge of his will and give us wisdom and spiritual understanding. Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse, what is that verse? Twelve, when then Jesus spoke to them, saying, uh, uh, "Saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life." There's strength in that. Jesus is the light of life. There's revelation in in light. In, in John chapter one, it talks about how the darkness could not overcome. The light. Darkness couldn't comprehend him. They couldn't get around him. Jesus is the light that lights everyone. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, was no without him nothing was made that was made. In him was the life, and the life was the light of men. And that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. There's no weapon formed against you that can prosper. When we put the Lord first, when we know Him, I say it again, the Lord is faithful. He is true. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you, but He will give you the, the answer to the situation. He'll give you the patience to endure the situation, to get over the situation, to win it. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. More than conquerors because of our faith in the one who gave us this salvation. The one who says, I will make all grace abound toward you. When we are weak, he's strong. Your weakness equals strength, the strength of the Lord. 
The joy of the Lord is our strength. That's what the Bible says, right? But what I found out is that means the Lord is my refuge and my delight is in him. Trust the Lord today and just be encouraged to stand strong in these days that we're walking through. There really is no weapon formed against you or your household that can prosper. And if it does prosper, we're not in here. We need to be delighting ourselves in the Lord more than in giving an occasion in our thought life for the, the hurt and the harm and the intentions of the evil one for the situation in our lives. I say it again, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world because he's reminding you of what the will of the Lord is for your life. And the Lord has nothing but thoughts of peace and not of evil. He has success for you. He wants you to thrive. He wants your spirit, soul, and body to thrive. And we only thrive when we're connected to the vine, connected to Jesus. John chapter 15, read it. 14, 15, 16, 17, read those chapters of John. Be filled with the knowledge of the will of God because he has nothing but good in mind for you. Be strengthened in the name of Jesus. Be filled with wisdom and knowledge and understanding so that we can meet Jesus in the air. <laughs> Be blessed, people of God. I love you. Bye-bye.